In this beginner tutorial, I will show you how to create fluid simulations in Blender. So in this video, I'll cover all the basics of how to create fluid simulations, and we'll be creating this animation right here. And we're even going to be doing the lighting and the rendering and the materials at the end of the video after we create the fluid simulation. And if you're looking for a specific part of the video, then you can use the timestamps in the video description to find all the parts in this video. And if you enjoy these tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, where you can get 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And you can also get the finished project files of this tutorial on my Gumroad and Patreon as well. I'll have all the links in the description. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button, and you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip if you enjoy this video. Now during the video, if you'd like to see the buttons that I'm pressing, then my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm going to start by selecting everything with the A key, and then I will hit X, and let's click on delete. So I'm now going to press Shift A, I'll go here to Mesh, and I'm going to add a new cube. So I'm going to use this cube to model kind of like a basic sink object, and then we're going to be animating the fluid simulation going into the sink. Now the default primitive objects in Blender are a little bit higher than an average human when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, so this cube is actually pretty big. So I'm going to hit S to scale, and I'm going to type in 0.6 and then enter, just so it's a bit smaller. Then I'm going to scale this down on the Z axis, and I'll just type in 0.3 and then hit enter. Then I'm going to hit the tab key to go into edit mode, and I'm going to click here to go to the face select, and I'll just select this face, and I'll hit the I key to inset the face, and I'm just going to scale that down to about there, and then I'll hit the E key to extrude, and I'm going to extrude this down just to about there. And then I want to model kind of like a gutter or a trough object, which is going to direct the fluid down into the sink. So I'm going to select this face here, I'll press 1 on the numpad to go to front view, and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to bring it up here. And I'm going to zoom out so that I can see the grids here in Blender, so you can see in the background there's these grids, and I want to scale this object up on the x-axis, and I'm going to scale it so it's about two and a half grids long. Then I'll press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, and I'm going to scale this object, and I'll scale it on the y-axis, and I'm going to scale it down so it's about half a grid wide. Then I'll I'll press 1 on the numpad to go back to front view, and I'm going to zoom in a bit, and I'll hit the E key just to extrude the face up, and I'll just extrude it to about there so it has some thickness. So I now want to add some loop cuts, so I'm going to go here to the side, and I'll press Control R, and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out so that there are two loop cuts, and then I can left click and then right click so they stay in the center. Then I'm going to scale these, and I will scale them on the Y axis, and I will scale them out just like that, and I'll scale it out so that the size of this square is about even. Then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select, and I'll select this face, and I'll hold down the shift key and select this face. And I'm going to extrude these faces up, so hit E to extrude, and I'm just going to bring it up to about there, and that way it'll help to direct the water down the gutter. And then with my mouse hovered over this object, I will press the L key, and that's going to select the linked vertices, and I think I want to scale this whole object down on the x-axis so it's a little bit less long. And then if I press 1 on the numpad for front view, I'm going to rotate this object and kind of just point it down here, so then we can have the fluid falling down, and then going down the gutter, and then into the sink. So I can now hit the tab key to go back to object mode. Then I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to go here to mesh and just add a plane, and I'm going to bring this plane down on the Z axis so it's right down there, and then I will just scale this plane up really big, and this is just going to be like a ground object kind of in the background. So I now want to add an object which the fluid is going to come out of. So I'll press shift A, and I'm going to go here to mesh, and I'm going to use an icosphere, but you really could use whatever object you want. I just like using an icosphere, I think that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to add an icosphere, and then I'm going to scale this object way down because it is pretty big. So after I hit S to scale, I'm going to type 0 0.08 and then hit enter. So that way it is quite a bit smaller. And then if I go to front view, I'm just going to bring this object up here and just stick it up here. And this is where the fluid 
fluid is going to come out of. So the fluid simulation is going to come out from this object, and then this object here is going to act as a collision, so the fluid will collide with this object. But we still need one more object, and that object is going to be a domain of where the fluid simulation is going to be. Because the Blender scene is of course really big, and so we need to tell the fluid simulation where we want it to simulate. And that object is also going to become the fluid simulation. So I'll press Shift A, I'm going to go here to Mesh, and we're going to add a cube. Now the fluid simulation is going to be inside this cube, so you just need to make this object as big as you want the fluid simulation to be. So I'm going to go to Front View, and I'm going to bring the object up, and I'm also going to hold down the Z button and go to Wireframe, and I'm going to scale this object on the X axis and make it a bit longer, and I'm going to bring it over here, and then I can also scale it down a bit. So I just want to make the cube as big as I need for the fluid simulation. And you especially want to make sure that this object, the object that the fluid is coming out of, is going to be inside this big cube. And then of course this object is going to interact with the fluid, so we want it to be inside the cube as well. So what I'm now going to do is just click and drag to box select all these objects, and I'll just press Control A, and I'm going to apply the scale because we did scale these objects. So now this is now the object's new default size. And then of course we should save the Blender file, so I'm just going to click here on File, and I'll click on Save As, and I'll just save the Blender file to my computer. So then as you're working on the project, you can press Control S, and that is going to save the Blender file. So we now want to add the fluid physics to these different objects. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, and I'll go back to Solid View, and for now I'm just going to move my view inside the cube. So I'm first going to start by selecting the cube object, and to add the fluid physics, we need to click right over here on the physics properties on the side panel. And then right here, we need to click on fluid, and then I want to click on this object right here. This is where the fluid is going to come out of. Let's click on fluid as well to add a fluid simulation to this object, and then let's also click on this object here, and this is going to interact with the fluid, and you can actually have multiple objects which will interact with the fluid. For now, I'm just going to have one object, but if you have multiple objects, you can add fluid to the those objects as well. So select this object here, and let's click on fluid to add fluid physics. Now when you add fluid physics, you can see that there is a type that we need to choose. And if you click here on the drop down, you can see there are three types. There's the domain, there's the flow, and there is the effector. So what I'm first going to do is select the cube object, and then here on the type, I want to choose domain, because this is going to be the domain, so it's where the fluid is going to simulate. Now if you click on the icosphere here, this object is where I want the fluid to come out of. So right here on the type, I want to change this to flow. So flow is going to bring the fluid out of this object. And then let's click on this last object here, and then on the type here, this one I want to change to effector. And this effector is going to make the fluid objects collide with this object. Now if you hit the space bar to play the animation, or just click on the play button right here, you can see it's not adding fluid, and it basically just looks like there's some smoke here. And that is because on default, the fluid simulation is actually set to smoke. So what you want to do is click on the icosphere or just select the object that the fluid is coming out of, and right here on the flow type, we want to click on this and we want to change it to liquid instead. And then you want to select the cube object and go right here to the settings, and on the domain type we also want to change this to liquid. So I can now click on this button here to bring the timeline back to the starting, and then you can either hit the spacebar or click on the play button. Now you can see nothing is still happening, and that's because this object is a little too small. So if the flow object is too small, then there's not going to be any fluid simulation. So I just need to scale this object up a little bit. So now if I go back to the starting of the timeline and play the animation, you can see there are some particles which are coming out of the flow object. Now I don't just want to simulate particles, I actually want to be able to see the mesh fluid. So to fix this, we're going to click on the box object, and we're going to scroll down here on the side settings, and we want to check mark the mesh button. So just check mark that mesh. So I can now go back to the starting and I can play this, and you can see that when I play this, the box is turning into this fluid object right here. However, the box is still there, it's just invisible so you can't see it, but if the fluid reaches the end, like here it reaches the bottom, it's going to stop where the box ends. Now this object isn't really adding more fluid, it's just adding one little blob of water and the water is just kind of falling down on the ground. And this is because on default, this fluid simulation is set to turn the geometry into fluid. So if I like made this object really big, then I can go back here to the start and I can play this, you can see now there's like a really big drop of water. Or if I make this icosphere much smaller, it's just going to use the geometry to create the fluid. So if you're wanting to turn an object's geometry into fluid, then you can do it this way. But I instead want this to act like a faucet, and so I want it to emit water out. 
out. So to fix this, we need to change the flow behavior. So if you click on the icosphere, you can go over here to the settings and you can see the flow behavior is set to geometry on default. But then there's also inflow and outflow. So the inflow is going to act like a faucet and it's going to shoot water out of the object. If you change it to outflow, that's going to kind of act like a sponge and it's going to suck up any water. So we want to change the flow behavior to inflow. And now if I go back to the starting of the animation and play the animation, you can see it's just going to add more and more water. Now you may have also noticed that during the simulation, the water was going through the object. Like right here, you can see the fluid is going through the object. And so to fix that, we need to make the fluid simulation higher quality. So what you can do is just select the fluid and then right here on the resolution division, you can turn this up to make the fluid higher quality. So I'm going to turn the resolution divisions up to 70 and then I can go back to the starting here and I can play the timeline and now it's going to interact much better with those objects. So now you can see it's actually going over the little lip here. Now when you turn the resolution divisions up you can see the fluid simulation does look a bit higher quality but it also is much slower. And right up here in the corner you can see there's this red text and this is showing you the frames per second. So you can see the frames per second right now should be playing at 24 frames per second but it's quite slow because it's trying to bake the simulation in real time and if I pause the simulation you can see the fluid simulation is still quite blobby so I'm going to turn the resolution divisions all the way up to a hundred and that'll make it look a bit nicer so then I need to go back to the starting of the animation and I can play this again and you can see it's even slower but the animation is looking much nicer now you can see it is quite slow in the viewport and when I try to move this around it's very slow so in order to see this much smoother we can bake the simulation and then we can play it back instead of trying to play it here in real time so to bake the simulation you can select the fluid object and then you can scroll right down here and you want to open up the cache settings now right here there's going to be a cache location and this is where blender is going to save the cache data so it's going to save the data of the bake simulation so if you want to move the cache data to somewhere else on your computer then you can click on this file icon here and then you can locate somewhere on your computer where you want to save the simulation data. I'm just going to leave it at the default though because it'll save it in the same folder where I have this Blender file saved. Now you can also choose a start frame and an end frame. And I'm going to have this simulation 200 frames long. Here on the end frame on the timeline, I'm just going to change this to 200. And then here on the end frame, I will change this to 200 as well. Now on default, the type here is set to replay. And so this is going to bake it when you play the animation in the viewport. So right now it's baking the simulation, but it is going very slowly and it is kind of laggy because it's trying to bake it while it's playing it. So if you want to change this right here on the type, you you can click on this and you can change it to all instead. And now that I've changed the type to all, there's this bake all button. So I can click on the bake all button and you can see it's going to go through here and it's going to bake the simulation. And if for some reason I want the fluid to stop baking, I can hit the escape key and that is going to cancel the bake. So now I can play this and you can see it's going to be much faster and I can actually scrub the timeline here and you can see it'll be very fast. Now since I've baked the simulation, you can see all the settings here have turned gray. So what I need to do is click on the free all button and that way I'll be able to control all the settings again so I can change all the settings of the simulation. So I just let this bake all the way through and I can now press the space bar to play the animation and we can actually see the animation going all the way through. So you can see there's lots of fluid coming here out of this object and it is starting to fill up the whole sink and then even at the end here it starts to flow over the sink. Now when I'm creating a fluid simulation, I like to bake the simulation, then I like to go back and change some of the settings and then rebake to see if it looks any better. And so because I'm constantly rebaking the simulation, I always want to be able to see this button right here. But if I click on another object, like let's say I click on the icosphere and then I want to move it over, now I have to click back on this object here and then I have to scroll all the way down to get back to the bake setting. So what I like to do is pin this setting so that the setting is always here. So to do this, what I'm first going to do is click right here and I'm just going to drag up when the crosshair appears and then let go and that'll close the outliner so I have a bit more space. Then I'm just going to click down and drag down here and that is going to split the window so now we have another properties panel. So now what I'm going to do is make sure I select the fluid object and I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. And I'm going to click on this button right here, this little pin button, and this is going to pin these settings. So now even if I select a different object, you can see the settings go away right here because we are selecting different objects, but it's still going to keep all the settings of the domain object. 
So now what I can do is I can drag this up here to make it really small, and then I can scroll down, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the cache settings. This way I now have this button, and so I can click on different objects, but then whenever I wanna bake the simulation, I can just click on free all, and then I can click on bake all, and it's gonna rebake the simulation. So that's just something that I like to do so that I can very quickly rebake the simulation without having to scroll down on all the different settings. So I'm gonna click on free all so that we have all the settings back again. Now if you want to change the speed of the simulation, if you select the domain object, there's this time scale right here, and this is going to change the speed of the animation. So just for now, if I scroll right up here to the type, I'm going to change this back to replay just so that it'll rebake every time I play the viewport. So I'm going to drag this back here and I can play the simulation, and you can see the speed of the fluid. However, if I want to make this slower, if I want to make it look maybe like a slow motion animation, I can change this time scale. So I could change this to maybe like a 0.3 and then I can go back here to the starting and I can play the animation again and so now it looks much more like a slow motion video. Or if I want to make this much faster here on the time scale I could maybe change this to like a 2 and I can play the animation again and you can see it's going to be quite a bit faster. I will just leave the time scale at 1 because that looks the best for real time. So you can see the fluid is colliding with the sink object but what if I want to have an object in here which is going to push the fluid around? Well to do that I can press shift A, I can go here to mesh and I can add a new cube. Then I'm going to hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to scale this cube way down and I'm also going to scale it down on the x-axis so that it is much thinner. And then I'll go back to object mode. So to make the fluid interact with this object I need to click on the cube right here and then I need to click on fluid and then just like we did with the sync object here I need to click on the type and I need to change this to effector. So now I can go back to the starting and I can play the fluid simulation and when it gets to this cube object you can see it's going to interact with the cube and so it is now going around the cube and so it's just flowing around that cube. So then what I could do is actually animate this cube. So what I can do is just move the timeline maybe down to about here so I'm going to go maybe to frame 60 and what I can do is I can bring the cube back and I'll bring it back on the x-axis. Then I want to add a keyframe here so I'm going to hit the I key and then I'm just going to click on location. So I can now move along the timeline and I'm going to go to maybe frame 100. I can now press G to grab and I'm going to bring this over on the x-axis and I just want to bring it right over here. Then I want to add another keyframe so I'm going to hit the I key again and then I'm going to click on location. So I now want to bake the simulation so it's a bit higher quality so I'm going to select the fluid object and then right here on the resolution I'm going to make this a little bit higher so I'm going to set this to like 120. And then right here on the cache setting you can click on the type here and you can change it to all and I'll just click on this to bake the simulation. And now that the fluid has finished simulating if I press the space bar to play the animation you can see as this object animates it's going to push the water around. So this is how you can make an object move through the fluid and push the fluid around. I'm just going to select the cube though and I'll press X and let's click on delete. And then again, if you want the fluid simulation to rebake every time you play the timeline, then here on the cache type you can click on all and you can change it back to replay instead. Now you can see as I'm playing the animation, it's just continuing to add more and more water. So if you want to control the amount of fluid, there's a few ways to change that. So one thing that you can do is just change the size of the flow object. So if I select the icosphere, I could make it really big and there's going to be quite a bit more water because the flow object is much bigger. Or if I want there to be less fluid I can make this much smaller and then I can play this and you can see there's just a little bit of water. But just remember that if you make the flow object too small it may not emit any water so you need to make sure it's big enough that some water will actually come out. Now another way to control the amount of fluid is by animating when the water is going to come out of the flow object. So if you select the icosphere you can see that there is this use flow button. So if I turn the use flow off, now if I try to play this there isn't going to be any fluid. So I can animate this use flow and when it is checkmarked it's going to add fluid but then if I animate it and turn it off it's going to stop emitting fluid. So what I can do is go to frame 10 and I want to turn the use flow off. Then to add a keyframe to this object you can either click Click on the little dot here to add a keyframe or you can hover your mouse over the value and you can press the I key to add a keyframe. And you can see the option has turned yellow and that's telling us that it's added a keyframe. And also right here on the timeline we have this little yellow diamond and that is telling us that it's added a keyframe. So I can now move one frame over by just hitting the arrow key to move forward one frame. And then I want to turn the use flow on. So I can click on the check mark here to turn it on and then again you can either click on this button right here to add a 
keyframe, or you can hover your mouse over the value and press the I key, and that is going to add a keyframe. So now the fluid has been turned on. So I now want to go to frame 40, and then I want to click on the use flow to turn it off. And then again, with my mouse hovered over this value, I'll press the I key to add another keyframe. So now if I go back to the starting and play the animation, you can see it doesn't start to add fluid until frame 10. And then once it gets to frame 40, it's going to stop adding fluid. So it's like the faucet is turning on, and then the faucet is turning off. And so that's how you can animate when you want the flow object to add fluid. Now if you select the Icosphere object, I already talked about how the flow behavior can be set to inflow if you want to act like a faucet and shoot out water. However, I also want to show you how to use the outflow. So the outflow is basically going to act like a sponge or a drain and it's going to suck up any of the water. So any of the fluid which touches an outflow object is going to disappear. So I'm going to bring the timeline back to the starting. And then I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to go here to Mesh, and I'm just going to add another Icosphere. And I'm going to scale the Icosphere down and I'm going to stick it here on the bottom of this gutter. So now with this object selected, I'm going to add a fluid physics. And then here on the type, I want to change this to flow. And then again, right here on the flow type, we don't want it to be smoke. We want to change it to liquid instead. So then we have this flow behavior, but I'm going to change this to outflow. So now this is set to outflow. I can go back to the starting here. And right up here on the settings, you can see I have the bake type set to replay. So if I press the space bar to play the animation, it's going to bake it in the viewport. So now you can see when the water hits this object it just disappears. If I hold down the Z button and go into wireframe you can see the water is disappearing when it hits this object because it is an outflow. But I will just hit X and then click on delete because I don't want to have an outflow object. So I now want to go over some more ways on how you can control your fluid simulations and specifically I'm going to be going over the field weights. So if you select your fluid object you can scroll right down here on the settings and if I close these tabs you can see that there is a field weight weights right here. And I can open this up and there's going to be a bunch of different forces. So for instance, there's like gravity, then there's this all here, and this is for all of the physics. But then there's also a bunch of other ones here like force and vortex, and there's also wind and some other settings. And so if I turn these off, then the fluid won't be affected by these values. So for instance, I'm going to just turn the gravity off. So here on the gravity, I could just turn this to zero, and I can now go back to the starting, and then I can press the space bar to play, and you can see the water is just sitting there. So because I've turned the gravity off, the fluid is just kind of sitting there, and there's no gravity to pull it down. Or if you wanted very little gravity, like maybe you wanted moon gravity or Mars gravity, you could just turn the gravity to a very small number, and now the gravity is going to affect it, but it's going to be much slower. And then to show you this taking a bit more of an effect, I'm going to really quickly animate the icosphere. So I'm just going to move to frame 15, and then I'm going to hit the I key, and I'm going to insert a location value on the icosphere. And then I can go to maybe just like frame 60, and I can move the icosphere over. I'm just going to like stick it over here, and then I can press the I key again, and I'm going to insert another location. So now we have two keyframes there. So if I go back to the starting and play this now, you can definitely see that gravity taking effect. So it's still is falling by the gravity, but it's kind of moving over here to the side because the gravity is much less strong. Now there's also a bunch of other field weights, and right now none of these field weights are in the 3D scene because we haven't added any force fields. But we could, for instance, add a force, and then that force will affect the water. So how you add a force is you press Shift A, and then you can go right down here to force field, and there's going to be a bunch of different force field objects that you can add. So just for an example, I'm going to add this one here, this force. And then I'm going to move this force over by just hitting the G key to move this around. And this force is basically going to push things away from it. So if I just like stick this right here, I can then go back to the starting of the animation and I can play the animation and you can see the water is now being pushed away. So you can see the water is going here to the very end of the simulation cube and it's just being pushed over there on the side. And I could change the strength of this force. So for instance, here on the strength, if you select this object here on the strength, I could just turn this to like a 0.1 and then I could go back to the starting and I could play this again. So this time it just has a very small effect. And so it is kind of moving over here, but it is much more subtle. And I'm actually going to select the fluid object again, and I'm going to scroll way down here, and I'm going to turn the gravity back to 1 just so that it has full gravity. And then this time it has full gravity, and so the force field is still affecting it. You can see it is moving a little bit, but not that much. And then of course if you wanted the force field to have less of an effect on the fluid, then right down here on the field weights, you could just turn 
turn the force down. So I could just turn this force way down, and it's basically not having any effect over the fluid. Now what's also really cool about these values is you could animate these values. So what I'm going to do is select the force, and then I want to make this much stronger, so I'm going to turn it back to a strength of 1. Then I'm going to click on the fluid object, and I'm going to scroll way down here and go to the force. So I'm going to start by turning this all the way up to 1, and then I can click right here to go back to the starting, and I can press the spacebar to play this, and we'll just let it simulate. And I actually want the force to be even stronger, so if I go back to the force settings, I'm going to turn the strength up really high to like a 5. So I can go back here to the starting, and I can play this, and you can see the force is very strong. So what I'm going to do is let this play maybe to just about here. So maybe about frame 25. So I can now click back on the fluid object and I'm going to scroll down here and I can add a keyframe on this force value. So I can press the I key with my mouse hovered over the force value and that is going to inset a keyframe. And the other way you could do this is you could just select the force and you could also add a keyframe here on the strength value. I'm going to click back here on the fluid and so I've added a keyframe. Now I'm going to use my arrow key to move over by one frame and then I want to click on the force value and I'm going to turn that to zero. And then again with my mouse hovered over the value I can press the I key to insert a keyframe. And now that I've let this simulate I can just jump back to the starting and it's going to be much more smooth. So you can really see that effect. So the fluid gets splashed over to the side and then it just kind of falls down. So I can just select the force field and I will hit X and let's click on delete. Now I can also press shift A. I can go down here to force field and there's many different force fields you could try out but another cool one is the wind. So so the wind is going to just shoot in one direction. So I could rotate this wind over, I could rotate it over to this side, and then with the wind selected I could turn up the strength, so I'm going to turn the strength up quite a bit. And then I can go back here to the starting, and I can play the simulation again. So the wind is going to act similar to the force, but you can see because it is wind, it's going to add a lot of ripples to the fluid. And so because wind is very noisy, it's going to add all of this noise to the fluid. And you could also rotate the wind, and you could animate the wind strength just like the force. So I could animate it up, all the fluid is being pushed up to the top, and then I could maybe rotate it down, and now it's going to push the fluid down. I'm just going to select the wind object and then I will delete it. And then there's one more cool force that I want to show you. So I can press shift A and I can go down here to force field and I can add the vortex. So the vortex is basically acting sort of like a black hole and it's going to rotate the fluid and suck it into the center. But then before I simulate this I'm going to turn the gravity off. So I'm going to select the cube and let's go right down here. And here on the gravity I can turn this all the way to zero. Alright so I've let this simulate so you can see what it's doing is it's rotating the fluid around and it's kind of sucking it into the very center. It's not very strong, I could turn up the strength if I want to, but you can see it's rotating it around and kind of sucking it into the very center of the vortex. So I'm just going to select the vortex and hit X and then click on delete. So using force fields is a really great way to control your fluid simulations. Now another way to control your fluid is you can tell the fluid to shoot out in a certain direction. So what I'm going to do is select the icosphere and I have this keyframe here which is going to move the icosphere over. So I'm just going to select the keyframe here on the timeline and I can hit X and then delete keyframes. And I can also click on this keyframe here at frame 15 and I'll hit X and then I can click on delete keyframes. Frames. Now if I select the fluid object, I'm going to go right down here, and also here on this force, I don't want the keyframe here, so I'm going to right click on the force, and then I'm going to click on clear keyframes, so it doesn't have any keyframes, and also here on the gravity, I'll turn the gravity back to 1. So I'm now going to show you how you can shoot the water out in a certain direction. So I'm going to select the icosphere, because the icosphere is the flow object, so it's going to shoot the water out. So on the icosphere settings, there is this initial velocity, and so you can use this to control the direction of the flow. So if you check mark it, then you'll be able to control these values. And so there's an x, y, and z value. So with the icosphere selected, I'm going to bring this down on the z-axis, just bring it down so it is kind of down here, lower in the simulation. So let's say that I want the fluid simulation to shoot up and over to the side. So we need to bring it up on the z-axis, and we also need to bring it over on the x-axis. So what I can do is turn this initial initial x to 1, and then I also want to bring it up on the z-axis just a little bit, so on the z I will turn this to just like 0.5. And you may need to play around with these values depending on the size of the simulation. But I can go back here to the starting, and I can press the spacebar and just let this simulate. And you can see it's moving over, so it's kind of shooting it over like a hose, but it's not very strong. So what I'm going to do on the z here is maybe turn this up to like 3, and also on the x I'll maybe just turn that to like a 2. 
So now I can play this again, and now you can see it shooting up like a hose. And so now I'll just click on this button here to go back to the starting, we can watch that much faster. And if I wanted to move it over on the Y axis, I could also change the Y. So I might just turn the Y axis to two, and then again, I can go back to the starting and I can play this, and now it's gonna shoot out on the Y axis by two. And if for some reason it's going the opposite direction, like right here, you can see the Y axis is moving it back, but let's say that I wanna move it forward instead. Instead of changing the Y to two, I could change it instead to negative two. So I can go back here to the starting, and then I can play this, and you can see it's going in the opposite direction. All right, so we've now covered many different topics, like controlling when the fluid is shooting out, also controlling the direction of the fluid, as well as using other objects as collisions, and using gravity and force fields to control the fluid. But another important setting that I want to show you is how to change the thickness of the fluid. Because right now, we've pretty much just been simulating water, but let's say you want to simulate something like honey, or molasses, or some other thick fluid. Well, to do this, we need to change the viscosity of the fluid. So to change the viscosity settings, you want to select the fluid, and then I want to scroll down here on the settings. And we want to check mark this viscosity. So turn on the viscosity, and then there's going to be one single value right here. So if you make the viscosity strength higher, the fluid is going to be more thick. So if I turn the strength value all the way up to like 1, I can go back here and I can let this simulate. And actually, real quick before I show you this, I am going to select the icosphere again, and I just want to bring the icosphere up. And then with the icosphere selected, I also want to turn off the initial velocity because I don't want to use that setting right now. So I have the viscosity set to 1, and you can see this is extremely thick. So the consistency is almost like some very thick dough, or maybe some whipping cream, or some toothpaste. And so this is very thick, so if I wanted the consistency to be something more like molasses or honey, I can, on the viscosity settings, turn the strength way down to maybe just like a 0.1. So here's the viscosity turned to 0.1, and you can see it still is pretty thick. So I'm actually going to make it even less thick. So I'm going to turn the strength to just like a 0.03. And then what I'm also going to do is animate the icosphere moving back and forth. So I'm going to click on this button here, which is going to turn on the auto key, and I can move the icosphere, then I'm going to move over on the timeline, I can move the icosphere over, and then I can move again on the timeline, and I'm going to move the icosphere over. So I've set the viscosity to 0.02, and you can see that this fluid simulation now has the consistency of honey or molasses. So the viscosity is a really great setting to play around with to change the thickness of the fluid. Now I am creating a water simulation, so I'm just going to turn the viscosity off so that we're not using any thickness, and it's just going to simulate like water. So now that I've shown you the basics of fluid simulations, I'm going to be setting up the final scene for the final simulation. So what I'm going to do is select the icosphere object, and you can see we've added some different keyframes here. So I'm just going to press the A key to select all the keyframes in the timeline, and I'll hit X and let's click on delete keyframe. And then I want to go here to front view, and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into wireframe, and I want to move the icosphere up here, and I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller, and this way the fluid simulation can come down, then it can go down the gutter, and then go here into the sink. Now if you select the box object or select the fluid, I want to make sure that the viscosity is turned off. So if you scroll down here, just make sure that you have the viscosity turned off because I'm doing a fluid simulation, so I don't really want any thickness. And also here on the field weights, I want to make sure the gravity is turned to 1. So if I select the sphere object, I now want to animate the use flow because I want the fluid to come out for a certain amount of time, but then I want the fluid to stop. So I'm going to go to frame 34, because frame 0 to 34, I want it to be emitting fluid. So I'm going to click on the use flow to turn it on. Then I want to add a keyframe on the use flow. So with my mouse hovered over the use flow, I can press the I key, that's going to insert a keyframe, or you can also click on the little dot right there to add a keyframe. So I'm now going to use my arrow keys to go over one frame to frame 35. And I'm now going to click on the use flow to turn it off, and then click here, or press the I key. So now it's been animated to turn off. So it's going to start to add fluid, and then the fluid will turn off. So I'm now going to be baking the final higher resolution fluid simulation. And so if you select the box object or select the fluid, if you go here to the resolution divisions, you can turn this up higher if you want the simulation to be higher quality. Although the higher quality it is, the longer it will take to bake. So in the final animation that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I actually turned the resolution divisions to 400. But that took a very long time to bake. I think it took at least a couple of hours just to bake 200 frames. So 
on the resolution divisions here, I'm just going to turn this to 200, and I find that 200 still looks pretty high quality, but the baking speed is going to be much faster. So I think 200 is a good balance between baking pretty quickly, but also looking pretty nice. But you could turn this up to 400 if you want to, and then it would be even higher quality, or if it's taking way too long, you could turn it down. I'm going to go with 200. And then if I scroll down here, we want to go to the cache settings, and I'm going to open this up, and here I have the start frame set to 1 and the end frame set to 200. And also here on the timeline, the start and the end is set to 1 and 200. So then before you bake this, make sure you press Control S or click on File and click on Save, and make sure you save the Blender file just in case it crashes. Now right here on the Bake type, I want to change this to All, and this way we're going to have the Bake All button, so I can just click on Bake and I can start to bake this. And I'll come back when it is finished. Alright, so the simulation has finished, so I'll just press the spacebar to play the animation and we can watch the final simulation and that is looking very cool. So if you want to end the video now and set up the lighting and the materials and do the rendering all yourself you can totally do that but if you'd like to watch the rest of the video I'm now going to show you how to set up some basic lighting and some basic materials and then we'll render the animation and then we'll compile the frames together in Blender's video editor to get the finished animation. So what I'm going to start by doing is selecting the fluid and I'm going to use the object context menu to shade it smooth. And so now the water is much more smooth and that looks quite a bit better. Now I'm also going to select the sink object and then I'm going to click right over here to go to the modifier properties. And I'm going to click here on add modifier and I'm going to add the bevel modifier just so that the edges are a little bit beveled. And then I'm going to turn the amount down and I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag the amount and I'm going to make it a very small amount just so that there's a little bevel there on the edge. And then I can also turn the segments up. So I'll turn the segments up to like a three and then also using the object context menu I can shade this object smooth. So now the objects have a tiny little bevel and that looks a bit more realistic. So I'm now going to add a camera and do a very basic camera animation. So I can press shift A and I'm going to go here and add a camera and then you can just move to wherever you want the camera to be and then you can press control alt numpad 0 and control alt numpad 0 is going to bring the camera to where you are. And then if you click up here you can select the camera and you can press G to grab and move the camera around. You can also hit G to grab and then you can double tap the Z key and that's going to bring the camera in and out. So I'm just going to go right here to the starting of the animation by bringing this back to the starting and I'm actually going to go to frame one and then I can move the camera around, maybe bring the camera back a bit. You can also double tap the R key and that's going to enable the trackball rotation and then you can rotate the camera around. So I'm just going to bring it to about there, maybe zoom in a little bit closer here so I can kind of see the water falling. So I now want to add a keyframe here. So what I can actually do is just click on this button here and that's going to turn on the auto keying. Then I can be just press the G key and then click to place the camera there and you can see it's automatically added a keyframe. So I'm now going to press the space bar to play and we're just going to watch this play through and when the water is going in here I want to move it down. So I'm going to hit G to grab, bring this down, and then double tap the R key and rotate this over and I can also bring it in a little bit. So I can now go back here and then play this and you can see the camera is moving slightly. Although I do think I want the movement to be a bit more subtle. So what I'm going to do is just select the keyframe here and I can press G to grab and I can move it over so that the camera will move a little bit slower. And then I'm going to go here to the very end, so frame 200, and I can bring the camera over and just bring it in a little bit just so that you can get a bit of a closer view of the fluid. So I can now go back and play this and just watch the animation. So I'm just going to do a very basic camera animation, nothing fancy, just kind of having the camera moving into the fluid. So I now want to light the scene, but real quick before I light the scene, I'm going to go here to the render properties, and here on the render engine I am using Cycles Render. So Cycles Render is a ray traced render engine, and so it's going to look much more realistic, and I am going for realism, so I'm going to be using Cycles. Now you could definitely use the EV rendering engine if you want to, and the EV engine does render much faster, but it doesn't look nearly as realistic. So I'm going to be using cycles for the animation. Now while we're over here on the render properties to make the lighting look a bit nicer, we can open up the color management tab and I'm going to use the 
view transform of filmic and then here on the look I'm going to set this to very high contrast and this is going to really make the image pop because it's going to make the colors more contrasty and saturated. So now to add the lighting, I can click right over here on the world properties, and I'm going to be adding in an HDRI from polyhaven.com. So it's a free HDRI, and I'll have the link in the description. So right here on the default world, I'm going to click on the yellow dot here, and then I'm going to choose environment texture. And then I can click on open and open up an HDRI. So here's the HDRI that I'm going to be using. So this is the Birchwood 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. Again, I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. And again, I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So I'm going to click on this and then I will click on open image. And then I can hold down the Z button and I can go into the rendered view just to preview this in the rendered mode. Now I only want the rendered preview to render what the camera can see. So in the camera view, I can press Control B and I can drag a box around the camera and then let go and this way it'll only render what's in the camera and it'll speed up the viewport preview and then also I can click right here on the overlays and I'm going to turn off the floor and I'm also going to turn off the X and Y just so that I can't see it and then also if you want to hide the simulation particles you can select the fluid simulation and you can click right over here on the modifier properties and you can see that there's a liquid particle system so I'm going to click on this button right here just to hide it from the viewport and that way we can't see those particles and then also to add some nice bright light to the scene I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to go here to light and I'm going to add a sunlight and I'm going to bring the sunlight kind of up here and then I'm going to rotate it over and I actually just realized that we still have the auto key on so it's adding keyframes every time I move an object so I'm going to click on this button here to turn the auto key off and then if I press the A key to select this keyframe here I can press X and I will click on delete keyframes so I'm now just going to rotate the light around so you can double tap the R key to enable the trackball rotation and I'm just going to rotate the light around I want to make it kind of at an angle so something like that and then if you click right over here to go to the object data properties here on the strength I want to turn this up to five so it's quite a bit brighter and then here on the color I'm gonna make this a very slight yellow color so it looks like sunlight now the image looks very blown out but that's because all the materials are fully white so once we add materials which we're gonna do now it'll look much darker so let's now do the materials so I'm first just gonna select the background object and let's click here on the material properties and I'm gonna click on the new button to add a new material Material, and I can just call this background and then this material is going to be very simple I'm going to keep everything at the default except the base color here I'm just going to turn to fully black and that's all I'm going to do for the background so I'm now going to click on the sync object and I'm going to click right over here to go to the shading workspace so that I can create a very basic procedural material so in the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here, and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into the rendered mode, and then I have the shader editor right over here. Let's click on new to add a new material, and I can just call this sync. So this material is also going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to take the base color here and I'm going to turn this to kind of like a light blue color. I think that looks pretty nice. But then I thought it would be kind of nice to add a tiny little bit of variation in the roughness. So real quick, I'm going to create a very simple procedural setup. So I'll press shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop this here. And then I want to put the factor of the noise texture into the roughness. So it'll control the amount of roughness. Then I can also press shift A, I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to search for the texture coordinate node. So let's just click on this and drop this here, and I want to use the object coordinates, so let's put the object into the vector, because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. And then I want to change some of the noise texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to an 8.7. Then I'll turn the detail all the way to the max of 15, and also the roughness here, I'm going to turn this to a 0.67. So it is kind of hard to see, but if I go right over here to the side, kind of look at this on the side of the material, you can see there is just a slight variation in the roughness. But I do want to make it slightly more contrasty, so I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go here to the search, and I will search for the color ramp, and let's put the color ramp between the noise texture and the principled shader. Now if I drag the black tab out, that's going to make it more contrasty. So now you can see it looks much more reflective. But then to make it a little bit more rough, I'm going to click on the black color, and I can just turn this up so it's kind of like a dark gray so just something like that so now you can see there's just a little bit of variation in the roughness and that just makes the material
material look a bit more interesting. So we can now do the material for the water. So I'm just going to select the water object and then I can click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename this to water. So this material is also going to be very simple. Here on the base color, I'm going to make this fully white, and then to make it so you can see through the water, I'm going to turn the transmission all the way up to 1. And then you can see it is a bit rough, so what I just want to do is take the roughness and turn that to 0, and that way it is now super reflective like water. Now depending on the type of fluid, you'll want to change the IOR value. And to find the correct IOR value, I highly recommend checking out this website, the Pixel and Poly IOR list. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to check out this website. And IOR stands for Index of Refraction. And the creators of this website basically created a key code, and you can locate to whichever material you're creating, and you can find the IOR value of that certain material. So right here on the top of this page, you can click here on the W, and then that's going to go all the way down here to the W materials. And you can see there are some different water materials. And I'm going to be using the water at 20 degrees Celsius, and 20 degrees Celsius is 68 degrees in Fahrenheit. So that is a good temperature for water at room temperature. And you can see right here the value is 1.333. So back here in Blender on this water material on the IOR, I'm going to change this to 1.333. And so now that looks a bit more accurate and it looks a bit more like water. But if you want to, you can also drag the IOR value around just a little bit to change how the water looks if you like something else that looks a little bit better. But I'm going to go with 0.333 for water at room temperature. Now if I zoom in closely to the water, you can see there are some areas where the water is very dark. And so to fix this, I want to add some more light paths. So what I'm going to do is click right here on the render properties, and then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to open up the light paths. And what I want to do is just turn the total light bounces up. And so I found that a total light bounces of 8 looks much better. So now, especially right here, if you kind of look at this water, you can see it isn't quite as dark, you're able to see through it a bit better. And then also, if you want to, you can click on this sphere object, and I'm going to use the object context menu and shade this object smooth. And then also, right here on the materials, you can click on this, and I'm going to add the water material, just because I think that would be nice to give it the same water material. Now, because this is an animation, to make it look a bit more realistic, I'm going to go here to the render properties, and I'm going to check mark the motion blur. So this will just add a little bit of blur to the water which is moving very fast, and it'll look quite a bit more realistic. Now if you open up the sampling tab, I'm going to go with 100 samples because I think 100 samples will be great. So I'm going to now click back here on the layout, and then I just want to render out one image. So I will now press Ctrl S just to save the Blender file again, and then you can click here on Render, and you can click on Render Image, and we're just going to render one single image. And once the image is finished rendering, I'm going to add a denoise in the compositor to denoise the image and get rid of some of that grain. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the compositing works space and I can click on use nodes here and this will give us a render layers and a composite. So I'm going to press shift A, I'm going to go here to the search and I will search for a denoise node and I'm just going to drop the denoise here and then here on the accurate I'm just going to change it to fast so it goes faster. I can also press shift A and I'm going to search for a viewer node and I just want to plug the image from the denoise up to the viewer node as well as the composite. And you can now see the denoised image in the background. So I now want to render out the entire animation to frames, and then I'm going to be using Blender's video editor to video edit the frames together. So what I'm going to do is click here on the output properties, and I'm going to scroll down, and here in the file format, just to make the file size a little bit smaller, I'm going to click on PNG, and I'm going to change it to JPEG instead. And then here on the quality, I'm going to turn this up to 100. Now I need to set an output for all the frames, so I'm going to click here on the file icon. And then here in the folder with my other files, I can click on the plus here to add a new folder, and I can just call this frames. Then I can go inside this folder and I can then click on the accept button. So this way when I render the animation it will render out all the frames to that folder. So I'm just going to press Control S again to save the file and then I can click here on render and I can click on render animation to render all of the frames. 
and the animation has finished rendering. So I'll just press Control S again to save the Blender file, and I'm now going to open up a new Blender file, and we're going to use Blender's video editor to compile the frames together. But of course, if you use some other video editing program, you can totally use that instead. So I'm going to click here on File, and then I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to go down here and click on Video Editing. So then right down here in the sequencer, I will press Shift A, and we're going to click here on Image slash Sequence. Then you just want to locate to the folder on your computer where you saved all the images. And if you click right up here on this little arrow, I want to click on name and that way it's going to sort it correctly. So it starts out as one and it goes all the way down to frame 200. So you can press the A key to select all the images and then you can click on add image strip. And then right over here on the resolution settings and also the frame rate, you want to make sure that this is the same as the Blender file which you rendered the animation. And the default frame rate in Blender is 24 frames per second, so it should have been set to 24. However, I rendered this at 2K resolution. The default in Blender is 1920 by 1080, but I rendered it at double the resolution. So what you can do is just select the strip, and then you can click here on strip, and you can click on set render size. And that way it'll set the correct render size for the frames. So I can press the space bar, and I can just watch the animation. And you can see that motion blur really helps to make it much more realistic. If I zoom in here, and especially look at the water when it's moving very fast, it looks kind of blurry, and that's really helping to make the animation look more realistic. So I definitely like turning on the motion blur. But there is one more thing that we can do to make the animation much more realistic and much more believable, and that is to add in some sound effects. So I'm going to be using two free water splash sound effects from a website called freesound.org, and I'll have a link in the description to both of the free sound effects. So this first sound effect here is this water splash, and thank you to the creator of this sound effect, and you can see it's been licensed under Creative Commons Zero. And then the other sound effect, again on freesound.org, this one is the splash 9, and again I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download it. And thank you to the creator who made this sound effect. And they licensed it here under Creative Commons zero. So you can just create a free account on freesound.org and then you can download the sound effects if you'd like to. Or of course just grab any water sound effects that you might have. So back in Blender what you can do is just click and drag and you can drop the sound effects from your file browser once you've downloaded them. And I'm just going to drag both of these sound effects in. And then if you click on the sound effects you can click on display waveform. And I'm going to do that for this one here. And that way we can see the sound effects a little bit better. And then you can just click and drag to move the strips around or you can select the strip and press the G key to move the strips around. And then you can just play through the animation and you can move the sound effects around and sync it up to the water. So this first sound effect here, the splash nine, I'm gonna sync this up so that it makes the splash sound right as the water falls. And then this other sound effect here, this is a bunch of little water splashes. So you can move the timeline and then you can press the K button to cut the strip. So you can just play the timeline and listen to the sound effects, and then just press the K button to cut the strips. To so just go along here, keep on cutting up the strips into the little sections. And then if there's any places right here where there isn't any sound effect, you can select that part of the strip, and you can press X to delete. Then you can just select each sound, and you can move it around, and move it over to the water, and then you can just sync it up so it sounds correct. And after playing around with the sound effects, this is what I've come up with. So I like how this sounds. I have a few big splashes here, and then I have some little trickling of water at the very end. So now we can just render this out to a final video file. So to set the end frame, you can click right here on the end in the corner, and you can just type in 200 or just set it to whatever your end frame was. And then we can go over the render settings. So I'm going to scroll right down here, and right here on the output, we need to set an output to save the video file. So you can click on this file icon. And I'm just going to save this in the folder with my other files, and you can click on the accept button. And then right here on the file format, I'm going to use the FFmpeg video, and then if you open up the encoding right here, I want the container to be set to mpeg4, I'm going to use the video codec of h.264, also the output quality I'll set to medium quality, and the encoding speed I'll set to good, and then here on the audio codec, I like to use the AAC. So those are the settings that I like to use. So then if you want to, you can save this video editing file by just clicking on file and clicking on save as and then to render this video you can click here on render and then click on render animation and there is the finished animation and this is going to wrap it up for this tutorial on blender fluid simulations for beginners so i hope you found this tutorial helpful i hope you learned a lot and thank you for watching and if you enjoy these tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel i will have links in the description to my gumroad store and my patreon page and i really do appreciate your support and you can also get access to the finished 
finished tutorial files for this tutorial on my Gumroad and my Patreon. Links are in the description. And if you'd like to learn how to create some other simulations in Blender, then I'll have some links in the description to some other simulation tutorials that I've created. And you can also check out my Blender Beginner Fundamentals tutorial playlist with the link in the description if you'd like to learn more fundamentals of Blender. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.